So I used decimals.com to figure out what the graph of sine 4x plus sine x is. And the key to the problem is realizing that sine x can be your vertical shift to sine 4x. So let's first start by graphing sine 4x. And that's got a period of pi over 2 because it's 2 pi divided by 4. So if you're just graphing sine 4x, you would just go from 0 to pi over 2. And halfway in between, you would have pi over 4 right there. And it has an amplitude of 1. But then, while we're trying to get the black graph, it's helpful to remember that sine x is positive between 0 and pi and it's negative between pi and 2 pi, which means that our vertical shift is positive between 0 and pi and negative between pi and 2 pi. So if we're going to be doing a vertical shift to sine 4x, let me find the red graph, which is sine 4x, and graph above it between 0 and pi. So I got to go above it because it's a vertical shift. And it's a positive vertical shift. But then, when I get to pi, I start going below it because it's a negative vertical shift. So already, this pink actually gives you a rough sketch of what the graph is supposed to look like. But then let me turn on the actual graph. And you'll see it's not exactly the same, but we got a rough sketch by just going above it between 0 and pi and below it between pi and 2 pi. To really emphasize the fact that it's just a vertical shift taking place, I'm going to replace sine x with 2 sine x and zoom out a little bit. And you can see that it really just is a vertical shift. I could exaggerate even more by putting 3 sine x. So it's a vertical shift of up to positive 3, um, or as far down as negative 3. Now, your problem actually asked for sine 4x plus sine x plus 5. Well, when I put the plus 5 in there, all it does is it shifts it up by 5. In fact, a really nice way to see vertical shifts in Desmos is to put just some sort of letter that you haven't used before. And then it'll ask you if you want to add a slider. And you can start the slider at 0. And if we want to bring it up to 5, well then you'll actually see the graph move until we get to 5. Now it might not be so obvious that this pattern is going to keep repeating itself. In other words, this actually has a period. But a good way to realize that it will is by exaggerating the vertical shift again by putting something like 3 sine x. And then it's pretty clear that there is a pattern here. And in fact, the period is 2 pi. Now, how would you have figured out that the period was 2 pi without graphing it? Well, you actually find the least common multiple of the periods of your two different sine functions. And the period of sine 4x is pi over 2. The period of sine x, or even 3 sine x, is 2 pi. And then you just have to find the least common multiple of pi over 2 and 2 pi. Well, it should be pretty obvious that the least common multiple is 2 pi. In fact, there are 4 pi over 2's in every 2 pi. And if you look at the graph, you can see that that's true. That I can have 4 of those cycles that each have period pi over 2.